Hebrews 10.32 states, But call to remembrance the former days. And Evangelistic Outreach Ministries invites you to rejoice in God's many blessings at the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting, September 4th and 5th at Shawnee State University's Vern Rife Center for the Arts. Host Evangelist Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Baer will be joined by the McCameys on Thursday night and the Primitives on Friday night. Admission is free. Service time, 7 p.m. Call 800-767-8713 or visit calvinevans.org. Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. Oh. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. What a beautiful day the Lord's given to us today, and I'm standing here at the Memorial Garden just outside of one of the entrances at the Vern Rife Center for the Arts on the wonderful campus of Shawnee State University. And we are looking forward to the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting that's coming up in just a few days, September 4th and 5th. We're going to tell you more about that a little later in the program. But right now, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the day that you've given to us. And how can I ever thank you enough for what you've done during the meetings this summer? Oh, the glorious outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit in service after service people being saved. Sunday after Sunday, we've been able to baptize people. What we're seeing you do through your grace and goodness, I can never thank you enough for it. Thank you for the friends that you've given to us that have tuned into the broadcast today. I know they pray for us regularly and we need their prayers. And I just ask today that you anoint the message by the power of the Holy Spirit, anoint the singing, everything that we do, may we lift you up. I thank you for being so good to this ministry and I ask you to meet the needs of all of our friends, especially those that are sick and shut in today that need a special blessing from you. Those that are battling sickness, Lord, I pray that you'll be near them during this time of prayer and even now, can they sense your love and mercy all around them as to let them know that you've got everything under control, that you'll never leave them or forsake them. We pray, Lord, again, for your power to be manifest through the broadcast today in Jesus' name and amen. Well, don't go away. We'll be right back with you in just a moment to tell you a little bit more about the camp meeting coming up. <laughs> I've tested many waters. I've sailed a lot of seas Searching for one that would bring lasting peace Those worldly new waves Only brought a bitter flood But I found what I needed When I saw the blood I'll take the old stream That flows from the mountain Sweet Calvary's fountain It's been faithful, never failing to redeem You can have the new rivers, I'll take the old stream Today's modern thinkers do not want to hear About the shed blood of our Savior so dear the flow's been denied in their teachings today But I'm not ashamed to say it The blood's the only way I'll take the old stream that flows from the mountain Sweet Calvary's fountain that makes sinners clean It's been faithful, never failing to redeem You can have the new rivers, I'll take the old stream Tried and tested, it's been faithful, never failing to redeem You can have the new rivers, I'll take the old stream
Hebrews 10.32 states, But call to remembrance the former days. And Evangelistic Outreach Ministries invites you to rejoice in God's many blessings at the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting, September 4th and 5th at Shawnee State University's Vern Rife Center for the Arts. Host Evangelist Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Baer will be joined by the McCameys on Thursday night and the Primitives on Friday night. Admission is free. Service time, 7 p.m. Call 800-767-8713 or visit calvinevans.org. We are so excited this year about the upcoming Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting. And really there's several reasons why. First of all, it'll be the first year that we've had the privilege to be here at the Vern Rife Center for the Arts on the campus of Shawnee State University in Portsmouth, Ohio. Now admission will be free both nights. I mentioned coming on the air, I'm standing in a memorial garden and seeing how we're having a memorial camp meeting. This is so fitting. This is just outside one of the entrances to the building. It is a gorgeous facility. I know you're going to enjoy the comfort of the facility while at the same time experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in the services there on September 4th and 5th at 7 o'clock each evening. The McCameys will be with us on that Thursday night, the Primitives on Friday night. There's no admission charge. And if you are planning on coming to the meeting, I wanna let you know ahead of time, the doors will not open until six o'clock. So the doors will open at 6 p.m. There's no reserved seating. So we invite you to come and be a part of this great meeting. We're looking for capacity crowds both nights of this Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting coming up. And then on that Friday, we will have the grand opening of the brand new ministry office building located at 299 Ohio Avenue in New Boston, Ohio. It will be open to our friends from the hours of 11 to 3 with a special prayer of dedication at noon. Some great things planned for that and we want you to come and celebrate with us what God has done and praise the Lord for his goodness on this ministry over these past few years. Now, it's very expensive to carry on meetings like this and to be quite honest, the income for this meeting has been a lot slower than what it normally has been. I realize we're in a recession. We don't charge admission for services like this. And we've really been praying and asking God to allow us to conduct this meeting this year without even the need to receive an offering during the services. I know that God can touch the hearts of enough people even today that if you would rally, do the best you possibly can. And I realize a lot of our friends would like to take their regular support and just designate it to this meeting. But of course, we have the operational expenses of the ministry. So we need extra gifts, special gifts. Maybe your church could send in an offering to help with this meeting because it's not only what happens in these two nights, these services will literally go around the world. So I hope you'll help us today. Our mailing address, Calvin Evans, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio. You can also call our office to securely place a donation. That toll-free number, 800-767-8713, or visit us on the World Wide Web at calvinevans.org. Let's join the program now, the message for today. Psalm 45, 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Our Father, we thank you tonight for this privilege. Help us to hide ourselves in thee. You know the need of the hour. Give us the words we need to hear. May the Holy Spirit use us tonight. Make us flexible in his hands. And above all, may some precious soul tonight hear the gospel of their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Let me read that eighth verse again. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. 
I'm going to try to preach about ivory palaces tonight. You know, the Old Testament writers, they'd just get little flashes in the future. That's the reason they failed to see when Christ came the first time, that gap between his first coming and his second coming. The second coming is what Billy was talking about a while ago. And I don't think it's far away. But every once in a while, these writers, as God moved upon them, would give us glimpses inside that city. This psalm sets before us the royal splendor of the King of Kings. He's now seated in glory at the Father's throne. And what a magnificent king he is. This psalm describes his majesty's government. A government that's permanent, perfect, pleasant, and prosperous. Please note these three spices and what they represent. He ties the ivory palaces to the smell of myrrh, aloes, and cassia. Aloes speaks of the bitterness of his suffering. When you read about aloes, you read about bitterness and all the bitterness of his suffering. Isaiah Isaiah tells us he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we're healed. From the manger to the cross, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As soon as he came into this world, Herod sought to kill him. He was as an infant of days was compelled to flee into Egypt that his life could be protected. Oh, how he suffered. The bitterness of his suffering. First he suffered the pinch of poverty. He was born in a stable and laid in a manger. He grew up in a carpenter shop. I believe Jesus had calluses on his hands. He could say the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not a place to lay his head. He didn't own one square foot of Galilee, but he could walk upon the Sea of Galilee and it would bear him up. The Son of Man, he would say, hath nowhere to lay his head, Matthew 8, 20. Jesus not only suffered the pinch of poverty, he suffered the pangs of hunger. You and I miss one meal and we complain, I'm hungry. I doubt if any of us in this auditorium tonight really knows what hunger is. Jesus went 40 days and 40 nights without food. I have an idea he knows what it is to be hungry. Do you notice what compassion he had on those when they would get hungry? Borrowed a lad's lunch and fed 5,000 men besides the women and the children. Had 12 baskets full left over. Oh, thank God. He knows what it is to suffer the pangs of hunger. He suffered the parch of thirst. Can you imagine the thirst he felt at Calvary. After the beating and the flogging and the buffeting and the spitting and the scourging and on and on I could go. But after all of that as his mouth is as dry as dust as he hangs there in the blazing sun as he hangs on a cross in intolerable agony. Someone said he suffered the thirst that the rich man suffered in hell. 
He knew what it was to suffer thirst. That's the reason he paid the ultimate price. That you would never have to go to that place and cry as the rich man cried for a drop of water. I'm talking about the bitterness of suffering. Jesus suffered the sting of slander. He was called a wine bibber and a glutton. They slapped him in the face and implied that he was illegitimate. Every fine, everyone found fault with him. Even his friends. And of course his enemies. He suffered the misery of mockery. One of them said if he's a king, he ought to have a royal robe and they put a mock robe upon him. If he's a king, he ought to be crowned. And they put a crown of thorns upon his brow. If he's a king, he ought to have a scepter. And they put in his hand a rotten reed. He suffered the misery of mockery. He suffered the hurt of misunderstanding came to his own, and his own received him not. He was run out of the town in which he grew up, that he called home, the city of Nazareth. They ran him out of Gadara for healing a man possessed of devils, putting him in his right mind, and restoring him back to society. He was interfering with their hog business and they said, we'd like for you to leave our coast. Yeah. Yeah. He left and never come back. Yeah. Yeah. What business of yours is standing in the way of living for him? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, sometimes we have to put even the business on the line. Yeah. I'd rather have him Amen. than the most prosperous business in this world. Amen. All the hurt of misunderstanding the agony of temptation and testing. His father tested him. The devil tested him. Men of all ranks tested him. The religionists tested him. They tested his integrity. They tested his knowledge of the scriptures. And on and on I can go but he never failed the test, thank God. Sometimes I fail the test, but he never has. He's always real. And you know, I've known him now, and been walking with him for 50 years. Thank God in the ministry alone, I say to some of you young preachers here tonight, just step out and trust him. Thank God, he'll meet the test, and he'll see you through. The agony of temptation and testing. He suffered the anguish of rejection. He was wounded in the house of his friends. He was rejected by his God as he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He suffered the aloes of bitterness. He suffered the cassia. Cassia speaks of healing. It's one of the greatest healing herbs that we know about. Jesus was a healer. The Bible tells us all of these miracles that are recorded in this book were not only written about what actually happened, but they are to teach us a lesson that we can trust Him in those same situations. There's 35 miracles recorded in the New Testament. And each one of them teaches a lesson that we might know how to trust him better. Amen. But I, I ran into some, in studying this text, I ran into something that sort of seemed odd to me. Now his miracles were for our admonition and our knowledge and our good. But when he was here on earth and started performing these miracles and God started glorifying him through it, He said some strange things. 
First, a leper came to him and said, if you will, you can make me clean. I know you can do it. If you'll only love me enough and trust me enough and see fit to do it. I know you can, if you will. And he said, what do you want? I want this leprosy cleansed. And he said, I will be thou clean. You know what the, about the next thing you said to him? Go your way and tell nothing to any man. Now don't let anybody know what I've done to you. And the Bible says he went out and began to publish it much. Now either Jesus knew that by telling him not to tell it, that he'd tell it all the more. Maybe that's why. You know, he says to us, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes the baptized shall be saved. Go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I'm with you always, yeah. even to the end of the world. After he tells us all of that and before he said that, he reminded us that all power, he said, is given unto me both in heaven and in earth. And after all of that background, he tells us to go. We hardly ever go and tell him to anyone and tell them about him. That's right. So maybe he knows. Because this leper certainly began to publish it. Yes, Let me teach you something else or tell you something else about Jesus as a healer. He came to Capernaum. He had been out preaching. The word was sounded that he was back in town. People began to throng the house he was staying in. And he began to teach them the word. And the Bible says they couldn't get any more in the doors. And they couldn't get any more. The windows were crowded out. And four, four men had a friend. They wanted to get to Jesus. They came and found the doors blocked. They found the windows blocked. And the Bible says they went up on the roof and knocked some tiling off the roof and dropped him right down where Jesus was teaching. When Jesus saw their faith, remember, he saw their faith. He said to that man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Those Pharisees start punching each other. Those scribes start whispering. Who does this guy think he is? Is he comparing himself to God? We know that only God can forgive sin. What's this guy talking about? Yeah. Well, Jesus knew what they were thinking. He knows what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does. You're thinking that's not much of a preacher tonight, but I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, where would it be easier to say thy sins are forgiven thee or to rise and take your bed and walk? that ye may know the Son of Man hath power to forgive sins. He said to the man, arise and yes. take your bed and walk. He yes. reached up, thank God, threw it across his back and started off to his home, yes. glorifying God. What are you saying, preacher? When Jesus is in town, things happen. Yes. Yes. Thank God for a Christ that's still able to perform miracles. I've been on too many roads and I've traveled too many places for you to ever talk me out of the fact that he's not the same miracle working God tonight as he's ever been. Amen. Notice something else. He teaches that your spiritual healing is far greater than your physical healing. Now true, he does both. But I think we sometimes underestimate yes, we the spiritual side. Yes, we do. That's most important. The Holy Spirit's in this world and he's doing his office work in this present day. Right. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatsoever we may think or express or look for. Amen. He's able. Yes, he is. So we need to always realize that precious soul that's lost Amen. is worth more than this world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
You see, the people were looking for a political Messiah. The Bible even says they planned to take him before us and make him king. The thing they didn't see was this gap between his first coming and his second coming, although it was taught over and over again in the scriptures. But even the disciples had not caught on to the fact that nothing could interfere with his going to Jerusalem, suffering and dying and crucified, put in a grave, and on the third day rise again. The aloe speaks of bitterness. Cassius speaks of healing. But the myrrh thinks, speaks of several things. I'm just going to mention two or three. The myrrh speaks of his birth. The Bible says when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the wise men of the east saw a new star in the heavens. And they came and found this Christ child wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. But when they finally arrived, they brought gifts. If you'll read your Bible, one of those gifts was myrrh. The myrrh of his birth. We trust the message and the singing have been a blessing to you today. One final reminder before we leave the air, Calvin Door Sevens Memorial Camp Meeting coming up in just a couple of weeks, September the 4th and the 5th at the Vern Rife Center for the Arts on the campus of Shawnee State University. It's been a beautiful day today. We hope you felt the presence of God and we trust that you'll join us next week at the same time or the same station. We'll have a very special program in honor of the Calvin and Door Sevens Memorial Camp Meeting next week. So make sure you tell your friends and family to join us on next week's broadcast. God bless you. Hebrews 10.32 states, But call to remembrance the former days. And Evangelistic Outreach Ministries invites you to rejoice in God's many blessings at the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting, September 4th and 5th at Shawnee State University's Vern Rife Center for the Arts. Host Evangelist Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Baer will be joined by the McCameys on Thursday night and the Primitives on Friday night. Admission is free. Service time, 7 p.m. Call 800-767-8713 or visit calvinevans.org. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.